All right. Now here are some final. Here are some final uh, tips for you, based on um, based on the marking scheme. So, your portfolio essay. Okay, your reflective essay. Your reflective essay is marked based on two different types of uh, criteria, two different types of marking. The first is content, and the second is what's called style. So if you look at a marking scheme, you'll see that it's divided into content and style. So I'm going to give you some tips, some advice on how to sort of maximize um, each of those to improve your essay and improve your grade uh, as much as possible. Okay, so first we'll look at content. Okay, so here is what I would say to you in terms of advice. The first thing is what you want to do, all right, is you want to choose a topic that's personal and that you can go into depth about. You want to pick something that you're comfortable diving fully into. Okay, so you don't want to pick something, okay, that's not personal. Remember, the point of a reflective essay is for you to reflect on something that's happened in your life that's like sort of unique, uh, a unique experience or sort of something that you've been through, which has shaped you in some way, which has impacted you in some kind of real way. So if you don't choose something that is actually personal or is actually, you know, meaningful, then you don't really create a reflective essay. And the chances of you getting a good mark are not too high. Now, the reason I say the second thing about picking something you're comfortable with is, as I mentioned before, uh, you want to pick something you can fully dive into. So you don't necessarily want to pick something which is, you know, like traumatic or unworked through. Again, if you've been through any, anything traumatic, you want to go ahead and talk to someone, especially talk to an adult who you trust. Um, and you know work through those things with them so you want to pick something that you could fully dive into go into all the details of and like pull all the lessons out of doing that is going to make your essay uh, much better and um it's going to make it uh marked it's going to mark make it so it will be marked uh, much higher also okay now uh yes that's what i just said Okay, now the next thing, the next thing is this. Okay, now remember that the way that you write a good reflective essay, and I would say the way that you write a good essay, just in general, uh, as a rule, is a good essay is one where you're speaking honestly, uh, sincerely, and you're speaking in a way that expresses your actual like opinions and thoughts and beliefs. So when you're doing this essay, try to sort of be as honest as you can. Try and really express, you know, what you think and how you feel, how you felt, what you were thinking. Try and go into as much detail and be as sincere as honest. You know, basically, you want to try and avoid, like, making things up because, like, the more personal, more more honest the writing is again it's more likely to be marked higher because it's going to be uh, it's going to be more reflective it's going to be more on point um, in terms of what's being asked for okay the next thing is as you're writing tell the key points of the story and the details that are actually meaningful so when I'm saying go into detail go into a lot of detail I don't mean necessarily go into the detail of like things that are not important to the story so if something is not important to the story then uh, you might want to consider like cutting it out now this is a sort of balance you need to you need to kind of like think about this carefully because if what you're describing gives a sense of like setting uh, of the place of the time uh, if it adds to the story in any way, if it adds to like th making the reader, you know, really be able to picture or see what you're describing, 
imagine that they're there, then that's good. You want to keep that in, okay? Keep those things in. I'm talking about sort of details which aren't really useful. They're not really meaningful. And you just put them in there because you want to meet the word count, something like that. So you want to cut all those out. You don't want anything in there that is not part of the story. Think about it like... um. Think about it like if you're watching a film or if you're watching some videos and then uh, imagine there was like a random scene that pops up that has nothing to do with the story. Uh, that will like ruin your experience of the film and it will like take you out of the focus on the film. So you want to think about your own essay in the same way. You want to make sure that the reader, once they begin reading, they don't get pulled out of that sort of focus they don't get uh, distracted by anything which is not sort of meaningful okay uh, another thing another thing is try to make the story and the reflection uh, seamless and what that means basically is the best thing you can do is if you can make your reflecting and your storytelling, if you can sort of change the order uh, in which you do it, so it it stays like fresh, so it doesn't get like repetitive. What you ideally want to avoid is sort of here's a bit of story, here's a bit of reflection, here's a bit of story, here's a bit of reflection. Now, if you're really like uh, panicking or struggling with uh, with this essay, and you're not too sure about you know, how to do the random kind of order or the seamless order. What to do is just stick to the basic order, first of all, story, reflection, story, reflection. And then once you've written your first draft, then go in and you can change the order, all right, of those. You can just, like, move them around. Just make sure that the story still makes sense. Yeah, just make sure that when you read it, it still makes sense. And that will make your essay sort of more engaging more exciting and it will sort of prevent it from being like uh, boring to the person who is reading it okay now that is uh, all of the content tips now here are some tips uh, in regards to style okay so the first thing is uh, when it comes to the difference between content and style content just means like the words in terms of what the words mean uh, which just means like the story or the actual information that you're sharing. Style means uh, the words you use and like the technical stuff that you do when putting the story together. Okay. Now, the first thing to know is in terms of the style, it's actually not as difficult as you might think because all it means... Uh, in a large part, is you're just using your RUAE skills, uh, which you've already practiced and learned. Now, if you are unsure about anything in RUAE, if you're unsure about any of these terms here, go back to the lessons in the RUAE section and just uh, practice until you can understand uh, them. Okay, so think about, so write your first draft, and then once you've done that, go back and then look at where you can add more interesting word choice. Look at where you can add some imagery, some similes, some metaphors, some personification even. Uh, look at how you can change the sentence structure around. You can add impact. So just how you, the way that you break down an article or a text using your RUAE skills. Now just use those same skills, but on the other side as the writer. So use your techniques and your understanding to make your writing more powerful and more interesting. Um, especially what you want to focus on is word choice and images that make the reader feel something. Remember, this is a reflective essay. It's all about your personal experience and about, you know, it's largely about how you feel and how you felt. So try and, try and do your best to, you know, use words and images that make the reader uh, feel that that make the reader sort of feel the emotion that you're trying to put across okay a simple tip 
make sure the writing is personal, but try to avoid like informal language. So try and avoid using slang. That's just like basic essay tip. And um, now, of course, if you're writing dialogue or something, then uh, okay, fine. You can you can use the slang and quote marks, but just generally speaking, uh, you want to avoid using slang. And um, finally, finally, once you've written your first draft and then you've gone in and you've done another draft, adding in your, you know, emotional word choice, similes, your RUE, different techniques. Then what you want to do is you want to go back and edit it. You want to edit the whole thing. And you want to make sure that your essay is entertaining, meaningful, and is something that people will remember. And the way that you can do this is, again, just reading your essay and cutting out any parts that are boring. So read your essay. Imagine you're reading about someone else. Imagine you're not reading about yourself. And when you're reading it, think about, uh, is there any any parts of it where you're feeling bored? Any parts of it where you're not really feeling any kind of emotion? And then change those, either cut them out or... Uh, edit them in some way, you know, add word choice and so on. And do that until you feel like your essay is very, like, gripping. The story is good, the story is good, and the reflections are, you know, meaningful. Doing all these things will take your essay from where it is to, you know, a higher grade for sure. So take the time to, you know, do the first draft and take the time especially to redraft it and to edit it because um for your folio essay you have sort of you have a very long time to do it you have at least until say you're most likely to get uh you know the type in September something like that you have maybe until from September until maybe April something like, or March something like that it's a long time so take the time, you know, to edit it and to make sure it's as good as it can be because it is worth 30 marks. Remember, it's worth 30% of your overall grade. So really take the time to, you know, make sure it's good. Okay, good job.